The Lions are one of 32 teams pursuing the same prize. And more specifically, they're one of 16 teams trying to get to the Super Bowl. And you can tell when a team has never won the Super Bowl or never been to the Super Bowl because all they care about is getting there. They'll worry about winning it when they get there. They've never been there. Let's just get there. Here's Campbell from yesterday on whether or not he sees the Lions in 2024 as Super Bowl or bust. I don't see bust. I see Super Bowl. I don't know what the bust is. So Super Bowl or nothing. It's else. you know. It, here's what I know, man. We all know what the every team ought to have that, right? Every team ought to be like, man. What are you playing for? You're playing for a Super Bowl. So we're no different than that. But I think, yeah, we know that now. You, we work backwards from there, and so you got to set yourself up no different than last year. Certain things you got to do uh, to really make that valid. You know, make that a reality. So, um, and and. Um, and so that's, yeah, ultimately that's what we want to do. Now to do that, you better win the division. You got to give yourself the, the best odds you can, right? You need to win the division. You need to, the best seating you possibly do. Okay, well, how do you do that? Well, you got to start with where we're at now. You got to go back to work. You got to do all the little things, which to this point our guys have done, man. They've been here for off season. They're grinding, they're working. We're in good shape. We're strong, we're physical, we're explosive. And, uh, and we're just in the beginning of this. I said what I'm about to say at some point this week, and I have no recollection whatsoever whether I said it here or on one of the various radio spots that I do. So if I can't remember it, chances are if you're listening, you don't remember it either. But what the Lions did last year was bust. He doesn't know what bust is. What they did last year was bust. 17-point lead at halftime. Blow that lead. That's what bust is. Super Bowl or bust. Bust means losing the game just before the Super Bowl, specifically when you're winning the game and you're up three scores and you make a bunch of bad decisions and a bunch of bad things happen and the team that you have on the ropes finds a way to resurrect their chances and knock you out. Now, here's the reality for the Lions, and I think this is why Dan Campbell said what he said in the immediate aftermath of the loss to the 49ers. He said to the team, this might have been our only shot. And he's right because Shireen, and this, this is something that I remember saying five years ago when Kyle Shanahan was doing something with season ticket holders and what do you want for the 2020 49ers? Well, I want to get back to the point where we're up 10 points with seven minutes left to go in the Super Bowl and I want to finish the job. And I remember criticizing him saying, Kyle, that was the hard part. The easy part is landing the plane up 10 with seven minutes left in the Super Bowl. The hard part is getting to the point where you've checked every box to get to the Super Bowl and have a 10-point lead with seven minutes to play. And that same thing applies to the Lions. The hard part is getting to the point where you're up 24-7 after 30 minutes of the NFC Championship game played on the road in San Francisco. That's the hard part. That was the thing that was Herculean, especially for the Lions. The easy part is where they tripped over their shoelaces and fell down, a la the gift that I used on X to announce that the show was starting today. Daniel Jones falling down after he had broken free for a long <laughs> touchdown run. That's what the Lions did. So that, that what, what they are back, Dennis Green used to call it the Valley of Zero and Zero. They are back in the Valley of Zero and Zero. And they are no longer the team that people look down their noses at. They are no longer the team that is an extra bye week for everyone they play. They are the team that everyone is gunning for. And they're teetering toward the point of other teams getting sick and tired of hearing about the Lions. It's going to be harder this year for the Lions than it was last year. Even with those odds, second behind the 49ers, even there, it's going to be very difficult for the Detroit Lions in 2024. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I do like him talking about a Super Bowl. I agree. Every single team this time of year should be talking about the Super Bowl. If you're not talking about the Super Bowl, you're not playing the game for the right reasons. Even teams like the Panthers, the Patriots, the Raiders, the Broncos, who we think have no chance to win a Super Bowl, and the odds say they have no chance to win a Super Bowl, should be talking about winning a Super Bowl. I mean, that's why you play the game, to win a Super Bowl. And you're, you're right, and Dan Campbell's right after that game. They may never get any closer than that with Dan Campbell and this group of players. When you get that close, you can taste it, you can feel it. That may be as close as you get, and that is the easy part. Now it's even harder. Like, you start over, you're at the same point everybody else 
is at. But the expectations are higher this year. Now, they were pretty high last year, but they weren't coming off a playoff game. They weren't coming off getting to the NFC Championship game. They were coming off a, a Week 18 that ended up being meaningless for them against the Packers. It was meaningful for the Packers, but they beat the Packers. But big deal, that didn't get them to the postseason. So it's not like this season when they're coming off the NFC Championship game. They have the fourth best odds to, to win a Super Bowl. And now you're expected to go do that. So it is going to be harder this year. People are going to be gunning for them. Teams in that division, particularly the Bears, are better. So it's not going to be perhaps, and I'm not saying it was easy last year to get there, but they did what they had to do to get there. Now they've got to start all over to get back to where they were, which is that 17-point lead in the NFC Championship game that they peed down their leg at the end of that game. And that's what they did. They gave that game away. They were that close to going to the Super Bowl, and they gave it away. They had a heart attack on national television is what they did. <laughs> and and then peed down their leg as a result of it. Look, this year they're going to have the burden of expectations. We've yeah. seen Jared Goff talking about motivation and like so many athletes who pretend they don't listen to the noise, he loves to have doubters out there because that's the thing that gets you out of bed earlier than you planned. That gets you to go in and work out harder than you wanted to on the days when no one's paying attention. Football is easy on the days when everyone's paying attention. Football is a lot more difficult on the days when everyone's going about their business and they're not thinking about what's Jared Goff doing today to make himself better. What's he doing to prepare for the season to come. So it's just a different psychological mindset altogether. Last year, it was they're still down and everything is pointing up. Now, they were kind of everyone's darlings and they delivered on that. I remember saying, I need to see the Lions yeah. do it before I believe they can do it. The, the closing stretch in 2022 could have been a fluke because the first half of 2022 was same old Lions. Let's see them do it and they knock off the Chiefs right out of the gates, it's like, okay, they're ready to do it. Can they do it again when they are the team that everyone is going to be gunning for? Their schedule is favorable. We've talked about this. They have only one game outdoors early in the year. They have a couple late. They go to Chicago Week 16. Now, the Packers game week nine, who knows what kind of weather you're going to get in Green Bay, but the rest of the, the stadiums are all domed. Whether they're open or closed, you've got Cardinals, you've got Texans, you've got Colts. Probably by week 12, Colts is going to be closed, but it's favorable for the Lions. They have a couple of playoff teams at home right out of the gates, but do you think the, Ram the Rams are going to be ready to go? The Rams are going to be there, and it's Sunday night football. It's Matthew Stafford pissed off because they booed and harassed his wife and kids last year at the playoff game. You think Stafford isn't going to be ready to come back and stick it to the Lions and rain on their parade and remind them, you are in the Valley of 0-0 zero and zero and we're going to send you to the early season desperation of 0-1, and one, just as the Bucks come to town the next week. So they got to be ready, out of the gates, checking boxes, building momentum. And again, they did the hard thing last year by way of getting to the Super Bowl. They tripped and fell over the easy thing. They did, and I do think their defense, which to me is the key, is going to be better with the offseason additions. They obviously improved a lot at cornerback this offseason. DJ Reader, I think, is going to help them uh, in the middle of that interior of that defense. I think they'll be better on defense. It really all comes back to how Jared Goff plays, and, and that's what we go back to with most teams, Mike, is – how does the quarterback play? You're going to go as far as your quarterback is going to take you. And he did not put – now, it wasn't his fault. The fumble was, to me, in that NFC Championship game was huge and changed the momentum and probably changed everything about that game. That wasn't his fault. But he did not play well at the end of that game. He did not play well in the Super Bowl with the Rams. So he's got to go prove that he can win a big game. I think that's still out there. I know the playoff win was big. I, I get that. But he's got to continue to build on those big games and show that he can really win when it matters because we have a couple of examples when, when he hasn't done that. So the, the line, this Lions team is going to go as far as Jared Goff can take them 
is he going to take that next step? And now they've given him a contract extension, so they obviously believe that he's the guy to go lead them to do that. But we're going to find out if he is the guy. Lions fans are going to get impatient real fast with yeah. close but no cigar. And let me tell you something. I know it's been horrible to be a Lions fan for the last 50 years, but there's a certain comfort in knowing that your season's over by Thanksgiving. There really is. Basically, Thanksgiving has been their bowl game. They play out the string, and you don't put your fans through torture. Getting close and failing every year is torture. And that gets old. And fans get loud. And they become demanding. They, it's not, I'm not, and this isn't a slight against the folks in Detroit. This is just one of the things you notice when you follow the NFL very carefully for 50 years. The fan bases of the teams that are knocking on the door but not finding a way to open it or kick it in or knock it down or blow down the house, those fans start to get antsy. And Goff is going to be the focal point. All that chanting is going to change if they get back to an NFC Championship game and a key throw isn't made in a key moment. Something isn't done to turn around momentum as it swings the other way. That's the hallmark of a great quarterback. A great quarterback knows when the time has arrived to make a play that changes momentum. Can you do that? Can you make the big play in the big spot to save a season? Or once it all starts to flow downhill, literally, as you pee down your leg, what can't does it just continue and you're done? Or yes, or do you make that 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 play or that decision? It's not even making a play. It's getting the team out of a bad play. I was told after the Broncos won the Super Bowl in 2015. Brock Osweiler could have won the Super Bowl for the Broncos, but he never would have gotten them to the Super Bowl. That Peyton Manning's decision-making at the line of scrimmage against the Steelers in the divisional round is what got them to the Super Bowl. Without that, they had no chance. He got them out of bad plays multiple times that changed the game. So it's the entire package. What you're taking up to the line of scrimmage, what you're doing before the snap, what you're doing after the snap. Can you do that thing at that right moment, whether it's conspicuous or whether it's subtle, to turn the season around? And it's all on Jared Goff now. At $53 million a year in new money, that's it. This is big boy stuff now. Time to go out and deliver on this potential that made you the first overall pick, that got the Rams to give you a market-level contract until they decided to give up a first round pick to get you off their books. And then now has the lions doing the same thing. And I mean, that that's just part of, you know, when you get that big contract, Hey, that's great. Now I got to go work even harder to prove that I'm worthy of the faith that they've shown in me, because if I don't, they won't be chanting Jared Goff. They'll be chanting Hendon hooker or whoever the backup quarterback might be. You know, Mike, the most fun as a fan the seasons that I remember are those that where you had no expectations and your team came, comes out and plays great and wins and exceeds. You think about what the Texans did. Like nobody expected the Texans to do what they did last year. And they come out and they win the division and they, you know, win a playoff game. They destroy the brand. What, what fun that was for Texas fans. And they leave excited about, even though they lost the next week, they leave excited about their team. Texans have huge expectations this year. It's different. And I think it's the same thing for the lions, even though people are starting to talk about the lions, a lot of people picked them to win the division. They came out and, and really didn't have, I mean, no one expected them to go win the Super Bowl, And then they get that close to it. I think that was a really fun season For Lions fans. And now there are all those expectations. Now the weight on those shoulders of Jared Goff and Dan Campbell and all those players is a little bit more. It's a little bit heavier because now people expect them and and they expect themselves and they probably expected it themselves last year, but nobody else did. So the outside expectations weren't there. The outside pressure wasn't there. It is there for them this year. And a lot of it is on Jared Goff, and he's got to be able to handle that 
And you're right. Make those decisions when it matters. Get them out of bad place. Do all those things that we don't necessarily see uh, him do. And, and I don't know that he's done that yet. He's proved that he could do that yet. So, uh, you know, this this is this going to be a different season, I guess, is what I'm saying for the Lions in that there are great expectations and there is a lot more pressure and things are different for this team. They should have been talking about Super Bowl last year. Realistically, I don't know if anyone thought they would get there. This year, people are, people think realistically they can, can, not only can, but should get to a Super Bowl and have a chance to win it. Now they've got to go prove that they can do that. And I, I remember a couple of years ago, all the expectations that were lumped on the Bills they were yeah. the betting favorites to win the Super Bowl. Josh Allen was the betting favorite to be MVP, wire to wire in the offseason. And, and I said at the time, you know, if I was the Bills, I'd be pissed at this. What have we done to be saddled with these expectations? We haven't been to a Super Bowl in 30 years. The Bengals just went, put all of this on them because it is a burden when you yeah. have those expectations. When everyone's saying how great you are. Number one, your players start to believe it. And number two, where do you manufacture that chip on your shoulder? It is so much better to be the team that is overlooked and disregarded. You know, the Buccaneers are still pissed after what they did last year, getting to the final eight. And but for not noticing that the Lions were engaging in horrendous clock management, that's still like the most overlooked story of the playoffs, I think, that the Lions were <laughs> We're just trying to hand the Buccaneers a chance to force overtime. And the Bucs didn't realize it, but the Bucs are pissed. They And this is great because your guys don't get soft. They have a rallying cry. Nobody believes in us, and they can say it honestly. And they're coming in week two. That's Look at this, what the Lions have. Two home games out of the gates, Rams and Bucs. They could be 0-2. Oh, that vibe is going to be a lot different in Motown if they start off 0-2, if they lose to the two playoff teams they beat in Detroit, and neither win was convincing, neither win was a blowout. They should have lost to the Rams. They could have lost to the Bucks, and they're both going to be loaded for Lion when they show up in September. So, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. They weather that storm, though, and they can win, and we're going to see plenty of them. They got five primetime games, six standalone games. They don't go back to San Francisco until Week 17 which who knows how different both teams might be by then, but they do have a chance. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.